family and Carlos and please welcome Dimitri Weber of Goldfield and Banks Perfumes. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Good, love it to meet you. Likewise, you told me you were coming and we did it and we arranged to meet and here we are. Exciting to be in New York, New York City. Can You've you been on tour, you can say, for the last month? Well, we've been traveling quite a lot in Europe, France and Germany and Belgium, the UK, mm -hmm. Italy because we had um, we had a launch of one of our new fragrances in um, in Florence, and mm -hmm. now we're in New York City. Tomorrow, Los Angeles, and then I go back home to Sydney. They can now be found at Barney's. That's very exciting for you. Yes. That's a huge yeah. Yeah. achievement, and congrats. We're very proud, very happy, very exciting um, to be working with uh, with Barney's, um, and also very happy to be working with amazing people. Um, here in the US, um, like Franco from Lucky Scent. Mm -hmm. um, we've got an amazing PR, we've got a, a beautiful team yes. that surrounds this brand, and, and that's what you need. You need to and work thanks with. to your PR, Levi. He didn't want to be on film, but uh, shout out to you, Mr. Levi. Hi, Levi. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but it's true. I mean, it's 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 lovely to be to be surrounded by beautiful people, um, and to be surrounded by people that know their job and, and mm -hmm. know the industry, the fragrance industry, the real perfume industry. So I hear there's a history behind the name. I thought it was two people or something, Goldfield and Banks, but I'll be no, sure that's not the case. No, 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 no not at all. Um, the story is a personal story. It's my story. It's it's my experience from um, Australia. Um, but Goldfield, obviously. Um, one of our key ingredients that we found in Australia, and it's an, it's an, it's an ingredient that we find in lots of perfumes, okay. is sandalwood. Yes. And sandalwood these days comes from the western part of Australia, from Western Australia. And the tree actually grows on fields of gold. So wherever you have gold in the mm -hmm. soil, you'll have, or you'll find Interesting. Um, sandalwood trees. Yeah. And then the banks. Banks comes from Joseph Banks, uh, which uh, was a scientist, botanist uh, from London, mm -hmm. came to Australia for the first time in the, in the mid 18th century with Captain Cook and um, explored all the fauna and flora, went back to, to Europe and mm -hmm. um, presented for the first time in Europe to the European society um, the Australian flora, which was unknown uh, back then. Oh. So, yeah. It's about traveling, it's about the earth, it's about um, the extraordinary beauty mm -hmm. of the country and its botanical richness. So, every perfume in your line, we're missing one unfortunately because of customs issues. There are actually one, two, three, four, five, six? Six, yep. So we have five fragrances, well six fragrances, they um, all are part of what we call the native collection. Um, so each fragrance highlights at least one ingredient that is a native from Australia. That's great. Love and that. this is something different. I always wanted to work with um, with um, ingredients that tell a different story. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we've been talking for so many years and centuries about roses from grass and jasmine from grass, and I was just over it. I just wanted to have a new story, something different, something real, something genuine. And today I'm very, very happy to be working with ingredients like Buddha wood oil or um, blue cypress oils, which are, which are ingredients that have never been used in modern perfume before. So that makes it very You nice. have a history in the perfume business before you established yeah, your own. 25 years. Yes, so <laughs> you know what works, what doesn't work. I think you have a really solid line here. One of them in particular was Pacific Rock Moss, which got a little, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure I'm a little high. This. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. I mean, in Pacific Rock Moss, it's a, it's a it's a unisex fragrance. Um, it's a fragrance that um, we we really wanted to have a fragrance. Well, I really wanted to have a fragrance um, that um, expresses this whole lifestyle of, of the Australian summer and the beach and, mm -hmm. and the salt and the showers and all of that. Um, but at the same time, I didn't want to use all those traditional 
ozonic notes like calone and you know floral ozone etc so what we did is we together with my perfumer we actually created a scent um, that was based and that is based on um, key ingredients and all these ingredients together we create the complete scent of that um, of, of, of that aquatic note. Yeah. So we have geranium so, combined with uh, sage, sage, cedar wood, and then we have some musk and some white flowers, and all of that together gives a very salty marine aquatic scent. So that was a bit of a height fragrance, but Goldsmith and Banks isn't only Pacific Rock Moss. There no, are other offerings no. that are yeah, very, exactly. very well done. Exactly, exactly, absolutely. Like Desert Rosewood, um, which is a favorite uh, of a lot of, uh, uh, um, I would say, uh, um, singers and movie stars and you know really? that, because it's a very um, it's a very um, unique fragrance it's an, it's a fragrance that right doesn't have any but yeah there you go it's um it's a fragrance you, there is nothing else on the market today that smells like this so why would you create a fragrance that you know that everybody else has done and been there done that so what's exactly. the ingredient in that so, that's native to so the ingredient in this one is an ingredient called desert rosewood or Buddha wood oil, uh -huh. which uh, comes from a, a region called the Central Highlands in Victoria. Um, it's a woody. It's it's just it's it's wood. It's a resin, mm -hmm. um, very dry. That's up my alley. I I love my fresh fragrances, but I can get down with a really woody and and um, resinous fragrance. I yeah. love that in the winter. Yeah, especially. I think that's going to be a good one. I'm gonna. I know. Probably check I know, it out. I know. Well, it's leathery at the same time, also because we have some incense in the fragrance as well. But the Buddha wood oil and hence the color. You know, Buddha wood oil is a very dark um, colored oil. The, um, the color of the juice definitely is indicative of how it smells. It's, yeah. It smells that rich. It very rich. Um, and we like that. We like rich fragrances. And, and, and even though I mean they're all twenty percent concentration, um, we. Even the fresher fragrances, you know, sometimes people um, relate fresh fragrances with something that is not so much long lasting and, mm -hmm. and very volatile. Um, I really wanted to make sure that even our fresh fragrances have a longevity. Mm -hmm. It's very important. And otherwise, of course, depending on the skin, depending mm -hmm. on the type of person you are and, you know, the different conditions, our fragrances vary on, on, on the skin. But we can actually definitely tell that um, most of our fragrances are most of the time uh, long lasting. Getting back to Pacific Rock Moss, I find that that fragrance blooms in the heat, in the real hot weather. Yeah, it does. It does, absolutely it does. And it was actually, we absolutely created this fragrance for uh, warmer countries as mm -hmm. well. So the warmer it gets outside and the, the more you start sweating, the better the fragrance actually gets. Because that's when the fragrance really um, evolves and, yes. and, and, and becomes a very warm, uh, woody, um, um, honey sort of uh, marine scent. It's, it, it lasts very, very long. And I know a lot of people sometimes, you know, say, oh, well, it doesn't last long. Well, I can if it doesn't last three days, it's, it, it doesn't have longevity. Today, <laughs> well, that's what people expect from aquatic fragrances. But I can tell you, this one really lasts long. And I mean, we get lots of compliments. We have, you know, a lot of men and women buying the fragrance for the second time, for mm -hmm. the third time. And this is actually a great indicator. That that's indicator. awesome. How many countries are, is your product in? Oh dear, um, I think we must be in like 15 or 16 countries now, yeah. Do you have a particular place that it's selling really, 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 really exceptionally well? Well, America. Okay. Obviously the US market. US. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, the US loves um, <laughs> Australia. Um, we have also countries like uh, Germany is doing very well. Um, Middle East, you told me that the, the desert. East, we just, yeah, we just launched in the Middle East. We get very, very good feedback. Uh, we have a few stores as well in, in Qatar, and we actually, um, wow. surprisingly, we sell more of the fresh fragrances in the Middle East than than, than our more woody fragrances. That's so pretty ironic because usually bit they like change. full, lush, and uh, yeah. woody and woody. Yeah. And you don't have an oud fragrance. We have an half an oud fragrance. Let's let's call it that way. Which one is that? Wood infusion. Wood infusion. Okay. So, yeah, wood infusion. Um, well. For, for different reasons, we have put in our fragrance collection here because um, you're a little reluctant to put out an oud fragrance, right? Absolutely, because everybody has oud, and I didn't want an oud fragrance. But what was very interesting is that we have in, in Australia, in the Northern Territories, we have a very very small production of uh, oud. Fragrance. Did you guys know that <laughs> that Australia produces oud? No. Well, the thing is, I just that, learned that today from him. 
Exactly. Well, the thing is that oud was brought into the country um, in 1850 by Afghan people mm -hmm. who were there to build the railway um, connecting the north to the south. And so they brought in the, the, the use of oud and also uh, started um, growing the tree, etc. Um, because of the, mm -hmm. the conditions, the climate conditions in the northern territories are very strong and very powerful. Um, and that was for me a very, very interesting story about, about the oud. Mm -hmm. But then the fragrance um, is very much inspired by um, an island called Fraser Island, okay. which has a lot of eucalyptus um, type of um, species. Um, and I really wanted to combine all the sandalwood from Western Australia with the wood species you find on Fraser Island, which is an, an, an island in the tropics, mm -hmm. um, combined with um, wood, because obviously it's present in the Northern Territories. And therefore, I've worked with an amazing perfumer from Firmini, she's based in Dubai, who really, really, really um, translated everything I had in my mind for this fragrance. I think I know who he is. Can we say who it is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, his name is um, Hamid Merati Kashani. Yes, we know him very well from a lot of puff on the Mali fragrances as well as many other ones. Yeah, he's amazing. He's a great guy and he's a master in um, manipulating oud. And I didn't want a traditional, typical oud fragrance and you've smelled it. So it, it's not really... It's not overly oudy. It's, it's a comfortable, wearable oud that's not, yeah. not too in your face. It's yeah. what I always like to say. No, no, absolutely. Really... Absolutely, because we've combined it also with iris and we've added some orange from Brazil and um, lavender and patchouli. So it's a very, very different type of oud fragrance. But most importantly is that we, we've combined all the woods together. So that's why it's called wood infusion. It's really an infusion. So it smells a bit of, um, of tropical mangroves and, and it's very hot. It's very um, opulent and, and, and very refined at the same time. Well, I'm very happy for you that you've been able to bring your creative directing and your vision to fruition and job well done. You have a new fragrance coming out right about now, I hear? Yeah, very soon. So that's the one. It's called Sudden Bloom. And Sudden Bloom, my day ago, Sudden Bloom, my God, we're so happy with this fragrance. Um, it's a, it's, well, we had to have at least one floral fragrance in our collection and... I love me a good floral. I have no problem with florals. Okay. I like it. <laughs> Well you, well, you just discovered it, and, and um, mm. it's a very tropical, um, lush, oriental uh, scent. Um, and we have used a very, very um, special ingredient, which is called um, brown baronia. So yes. By the way, I've got it here. It's a very, very small. So you see... It's almost syrupy. It's almost syrupy. It smells a bit like tea. It smells a bit like... Um, it's, it's, it's very citrusy. Herbal. Herbal. Woody, so this one actually is worth ten thousand US dollars a kilo. So well, the, the absolute is, is extremely expensive, and it is the most expensive ingredient in our industry. And it's not really used too often in perfumery. No, you're pretty. It's pretty unique to your brand. It's pretty unique because it comes from Tasmania, and Tasmania is the the only country in the world where you actually um, harvest and produce. The absolute of Baronia. So mm -hmm. we work with a company called Tasmanian Essential Oils, um, or, or Essential Oils of Tasmania. It's called. Um, absolutely lovely people, um, and they grow and they harvest the most supreme quality of brown Baronia. And I've really wanted to explore this one in our new fragrance and, and have it in real. Yeah. Having smelled this, this is really. It's not a very feminine floral. It's, it's definitely unisex. But it's a big fragrance. It's got vanilla in it, really nice vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's just really to die for. If you notice, the cap is different, so it's priced a little higher than the rest of the it's collection. Gilded. Yeah. So the cap is gilded, and also what the fragrance has is it has coconut, um, because obviously I, I really wanted the fragrance to be very um, almost toxic with you know um, ilang ilang, very tropical mm -hmm. ilang ilang and baronia and jasmine and. and um, vetiver, mm -hmm. um, but coconut definitely brings a tropical. Um, a I, I tropical really, really did enjoy that one. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a beautiful, and the reactions have been absolutely amazing. It's a limited production, so um, first in, first served, I would say. Um, we only have 
a, a few thousands of these units available. Um, and the harvest, as you can see on the bottle, so the harvest, the Baronia, the Bramaronia used in this fragrance um, is the harvest of 2017. Mm -hmm. Production is um, from this year, yeah, that's it. Um, so every year it will come back in the collection. But it'll be slightly varied in, in aroma or? It will be more or less the same fragrance. Okay. Um, but obviously, I mean, unless you're a very big expert, uh, you will probably smell the difference. <laughs> um, but most of the time people won't really smell the difference. It really depends on the batch, but it should be, it should be more or less the same. Awesome, well this was really interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed. Dimitri Weber from Goldfield and Banks. Thank you. Take care and we'll see you at the next review. And come and visit us in Sydney, Australia. I'd love to.